What's up, developers? It's Real Tough Candy back online with you guys today, about to pass the mic to my friend, Rachel Nicole. Now, Rachel Nicole is a full stack QA engineer, and today she's gonna introduce you guys to test cases. What are they? What are their components? When would you use one? And she's also gonna do a little demo, a simple test case, so you can start getting some ideas for writing your own and showing you a little more about this career path. Before we get it started here, I wanna give a shout out to Randy M, Sherry, and William C. All three of these are my new peeps, my new channel members. Thank you so much for your support. You make these videos possible. Without further ado, Rachel Nicole, take it away. Show us what this test case thing is all about. Thanks, RTC, for having me back here today. So, for those of you who know me, my name is Rachel Nicole. I am a fellow full stack QA engineer here on the platform. And in today's video, I wanted to take you guys through a QA assessment with me, and I'm going to teach you a little bit about how to write a simple test case. So before we cover all that information, I'm gonna give you a few seconds to grab your snacks, tea, and I'd appreciate if you liked this video before we get rolling. So first and foremost, what is a test case? A test case is a set of actions executed to verify a particular feature or functionality of your software application. So a test case includes test steps, test data, precondition, postcondition, developed for specific testing scenarios to verify any requirements. The test case includes certain variables or conditions. So this allows the test engineer to compare actual versus expected results. And this helps determine whether if the application or software product is functioning and meets the requirements for the customer. Let's get into test scenarios versus test cases. So Test scenarios are rather vague and cover a wide range of possibilities, and testing is all about being specific. So one possible testing scenario could be testing the functionality of a simple login on a page. So one test case could be verifying the user information and their password. Another test case could be entering invalid user data and a password to see the results. And another potential test case could be entering in no login information and hit the login button just to see what the results of that would even look like too. Now I'm going to take you through an example on how to create the test case. So let's create the test case for the scenario, check in login functionality. So a simple test case for this scenario would be entering in the test case number, and the test case description. So this is how you would set it up. And for the description, you could add in check response when the valid email and password is entered. So the second step would be in order to execute the test case, you need the test data. So you would add that information below the chart. So besides the test case, the test case description, now you can add in your test data. So that would be the email and the password credentials. So identifying the test case data could be time consuming and may sometimes require creating test data fresh. So this is the reason why this information needs to be documented. So for the third step, in order to execute the test case, a tester needs to be able to perform a specific set of actions on the AUT. This is documented as below. So now that we have a test case description, now you want to add in your test steps. This is a chart on how you can set up a little test scenario for that. So the testing steps would be entering in your email and address, enter in the password, and then the final step is to click sign in. So many times the test steps are not as simple as above, hence this is why there needs to be documentation. Also, the author of the test case may leave the organization or go on vacation, they might be sick, or even just busy with other critical tasks. So they also might even have a new hire that might be asked to execute the test case. So documenting these steps will help them facilitate reviews by the other stakeholders. So moving on to step four, this is when we will be looking at the goal of the test cases is to check behavior of the AUT for an expected result. This needs to be documented as below. So the other part that you need to add into this is the expected results. So for this test 
scenario with the login functionality, the expected result should be that the login should be successful. During the test execution time, the tester will check expected results against actual results and assign them as a passed or fail status. So as you can see on the chart, that's why they have the extra column added for pass and fail. Moving along to step five, apart from your test case, you may have a field like the precondition, which specifies things that must be in place before the test can run. For our test case, a precondition would be to have your browser installed to have access to the site under test. A test case may also include post conditions, which specifies anything that applies after the test case completes. For our test case, a post condition would be the time and date of the login that is stored in the database. So the format of a standard test case is right here on this little chart that I have up here for you guys. And pretty much this entire table may be created in Word, Excel, or any other test management tool. That's all there is to the test case design. Now, while drafting a test case to include the following information, so you want to make sure that you include the description of what requirements need to be tested, the explanation of how the system will be tested, the test setup, like the version of the application under test, the inputs and outputs, or actions, and the expected results. All right, well, that's all that I have for today to create a simple test case for login functionality. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. RTC, I want to thank you for having me back here on your channel today. It was a great time here, and I hope you guys got an opportunity to learn something new about QA engineering. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.